Hello humans, my name is Dale Kingsmill and welcome to another one of my mythology vlogs for the Geek and Sundry Vlogs channel. And this week we're going to be talking about one of the world's greatest matters of geographical intrigue. That is, of course, that today we're looking into the story of Atlantis. Now it's actually a little bit contested as to whether Atlantis is a Greek myth or an Egyptian one, and that's because the story comes from a trip that Solon made to Egypt in 500 and something BC. During this trip, Solon talked to a lot of the high priests there who were in charge of keeping the histories of Egypt. And he quickly realized that these guys knew a lot more than he or any of the other Greek people he knew did. And one of the priests explained that this was because Egypt was in a fairly safe location as far as natural disasters went. They were in the middle of a desert, so a flood to them tended to mean just, you know, better crops. And again, they were in a desert, so there wasn't a whole lot to catch on fire. But the priest said that Greece, on the other hand, had suffered many natural disasters over the millennia. And he suggested that each one of these disasters had gone through and destroyed any of the histories that Greece had collected. And in particular, the priest said that these natural disasters tended to strike whenever Greece had just hit the point of writing things down. And so every time there was a flood or a fire, the people who could actually write things down were killed and all of their writings drowned or burned with them, leaving a couple of not all their mountain farmers to rebuild from the beginning again. I mean, it's ridiculous, said the priest. I mean, you guys don't even remember how great Athens used to be. You guys destroyed Atlantis, man. That was big. Uh, what? The... Uh, who? Atlantis? Sorry, what? What? And so the priest went on to explain to Solon the story of the Atlantean Empire, its rise to power, and its ultimate destruction at the hands of the Greeks. Now there are a few different claims as to who exactly was in charge of the island of Atlantis. It was either Poseidon, god of the sea, ironic given that I just made a video about how he, he wasn't allowed to be in charge of any cities. Atlas, the titan god who would eventually end up holding up the heavens as punishment. Or a son of Poseidon who was named Atlas, just to make things simple. In the main account of this story that we have written by Plato, he claims that it was Poseidon who originally founded Atlantis. According to this version of the story, Poseidon fell in love with a woman named Cleto who lived on the island. And together they had five pairs of twin boys. That's a lot of twins. What are the chances of that even? The eldest of the eldest pair of twins was named Atlas. Thanks for that, that really makes things clear and simple. And while all of the 10 boys got to be king, Atlas got to be high king. It was like a Narnia situation, but with way more than four. Now the island of Atlantis was supposed to be sort of as big as North Africa, and Turkey taped together and situated right in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean, which at the time of its existence would have allowed passage between the Mediterranean and North America. And it was all like mountainous in the north and protecting them from cold northern winds and open and nice and lovely looking to the warm south with a big flat oblong shaped plain. <laughs> Oblong. Is oblongula a word? Poseidon took the mountain where Cleto lived and carved it into a beautiful palace. He then carved into the island three circular moats. So then it was kind of like mountain palace in the middle with a bit of an island around it and then a big strip of ocean and then a bigger strip of land and then a bigger strip of ocean and then a bigger strip of land and then how many strips of ocean am I up to? Three strips of ocean and then four strips of land. Is that right? Now I'm confused. There were a bunch of rings and it was alternating land and water and getting bigger as it got further away from the central island where the palace mountain was. Poseidon made this island into a paradise. So for generations to come, there were incredible crops of the most delicious fruit and immense stores of wood and precious rocks to be quarried, as well as all kinds of exotic and spectacular animals. There's particular attention paid to just how many elephants lived on the island of Atlantis. Apparently there were a lot of elephants, and as Atlantis continued to develop, it used all of these resources to the best of its ability. The Atlanteans dug a huge canal that reached from the ocean to the center island, allowing ships to enter. They built huge, magnificent bridges that reached across each of the moats. They had tunnels going through the rings of island so that even more boats could get in and they carved docks out of the cliff walls 
They made, they just carved dock shapes out of the rock. The defenses of the island were amazing. Each ring of land had a huge wall surrounding it and guard towers posted at regular intervals. The walls of the inner rings were each coated in turn with copper and tin and orichalcum. On the center island they had built this magnificent temple to Poseidon which was all made of gold and silver and orichalcum and ivory. But that's not the most impressive bit. I think the most impressive bit is that they made a statue of Poseidon that was so huge that it hit the ceiling of the building. And they couldn't stop there, no, no. They put this gold statue of Poseidon in a golden chariot led by six winged horses, also gold. And he was surrounded by 100 gold nereids on 100 gold dolphins. That's just a lot of gold. Their technology was super advanced as well with aqueducts transporting both hot and cold water all across the island. And with systems allowing the excess water that wasn't used to go down into the various orchards and farms and keep the agricultural sector running perfectly. Basically, the island became this hub of trade and military power and new politics. And for years and years and years and years, this island was ruled as a peaceful utopia. But after an age of prosperity and peacefulness, the descendants of the original kings became complacent. They didn't care so much about gold or fancy rocks anymore. They had everything and so they stopped caring about it. And so one day the Atlanteans decided that they would invade Europe. And you know, while they were at it, they may as well take over some of Asia and Africa as well. They'd already managed to conquer a lot of the lands around the Mediterranean Sea when Athens decided to put together an alliance of nations to stand against the Atlantean army. But the Atlantean army was huge and one by one the nations dropped out until Athens stood alone. However, the Greek gods had noticed the growing greed of the Atlantean kings and had taken the side of Athens. Despite being woefully outnumbered, the Athenians managed to keep the fight against the Atlanteans going for far longer than should have been possible. But when it looked like they might lose after all, the gods had to step in, sending terrible storms and earthquakes, and possibly some volcanic eruptions, and the entire island of Atlantis was swallowed up into the sea and vanished, with almost the whole Athenian army swallowed up in the process. And so Atlantis, as it turns out, is another classic Greek story of hubris, only this time it involves the death of an entire gigantic ocean nation, so bit, bit, bit of a bigger scale this time. If you enjoyed this video, please do hit the like and share buttons, as well as subscribing to the Geek and Sundry Vlogs channel because I make another video here every two weeks. And while you're waiting for the next myth to roll around, you can always check out a bunch of the other Geek and Sundry Vloggers, for example, Amy Dallin, who is our comic book enthusiast and one of my favorites. You would also make me a very, very happy person if you would go and subscribe to my personal channel here on YouTube, Monarchs Factory, where I upload every single week. Don't forget to email this to your grandma and I will see you next time with another myth.